The Spirit of God here is here talking just where he wants to talk. The finger of God is here already. We're going to sit. You're going to come before God in your hearts. And you're going to deal with some stuff called humanism. And religion. And faithlessness. And fear. And superstition. And passivity. And you're going to ask the Father to identify those things that are keeping you suppressed under the power of Satan to keep you from being a believer. Some of you may just want to come here and just prostrate yourself on the floor before him. I'm not budging with this one, folks. I didn't come here with this level just to go on and hear a bunch of exclamation points. God bless them. I love them sometimes. This is where God is dealing with your hearts. You think you need to repent to the Father for being cold and different, fearful? You know what really grieves me? We have services here twice a week. Friday nights, half the church doesn't even show up Friday night. We don't have Sunday night service. Most churches do. We don't have Wednesday night service. Most churches do. Very few people come out Sunday night or Wednesday night either in commercial churches. We have two times we gather to hear God together, and it's right here. Your leaders are going to be here. Unless we're traveling, unless we're out for some reason, your elders are going to be here. You're never going to have to run a service by yourself without your elders. Would you join us in our vision and our hearts when we're here? I'm not chastising you. I'm concerned about passivity. I'm concerned about everything that has taken the Christian church and has made it a powerless force, even in our own nation. Devils aren't disturbed because you walk the streets. I want a devil to be so uncertain about what you're going to do. I'm unpredictable. The Holy Spirit's like a wind. It blows where it will, but it blows the Holy Spirit. It works through believers on behalf of the sons and daughters of the Father to establish the kingdom. I don't want business as usual here, folks. If so, I'm going to ask God to lay, raise up the stones and put life in them and bring them in here. I'm not interested. I love this flock. This is one of the greatest flocks in the world. Don't think I'm against you. If you're listening to think that I'm being negative about you, what I'm saying, then you are absolutely got a seed in you already that wants to hear something negative. My job is to exhort you. My job is to challenge you. My job is to provoke you. To righteousness. My job is to not let you go down under, but bring you up in full stature of the Father in Christ Jesus. I want the Holy Spirit to have something to do. I'm not budging until you've made the decision you want to move on in Him. Because He because it's going to have to happen here. I want to see God in this fellowship in power. I want his glory to be seen. Now you've got some work to do to come in line with this. You're going to have to take your heart and give it to God fully. You say, this is a little too radical. Really? I don't think so. Do you, would you like this to be a powerless church? I told my pastors, and I've been talking to them recently, the worst thing that can happen to this place is that we become a correct, intellectual, doctrinally correct church that's still powerless. It's not knowing the truth. It's being a doer of it. You can be filled with knowledge, and it doesn't mean a hill of beans, folks. I'm not impressed with knowledge. I'm interested in the fruit of knowledge. Why? Because faith without works is dead. Don't tell me you have faith and I don't see your works. 
because faith without works is dead. You say you have faith, I'll show you my faith by my works. If you don't believe me, believe me for my work's sake, for they testify of him. I'm not getting the things done for the Father that I should be doing. But I am doing the things that he's called me to do. But I don't want to draw attention to Henry. I want this, you are the body of Christ. Henry is just part of you. I refuse for people to come here. Do you ever wonder why that I never show up in the day of ministry and for my life? Because if I did, everybody would want me. And they wouldn't want those that have come to represent the Father as the corporate body. That's just the way it is. If you look to me, you're not looking to God. I want the Father, those of you that are here at the altar, those of you that are out there, I want the Father and you to connect that you're really on duty for him. You're really available to represent him. You say, well, I don't know if it's going to happen. It will never happen if you think that way. If I hadn't shown up to go down and be trained for two days and showed up at the healing explosion, it would have never happened. And I would never have experienced the glory of God through Henry that gave me the foundation to believe that if he worked with me once, he could work with me a second time. I yearn for the day that people are forming lines out here because you're here. I'd love to see some of you go to Walmart and they just say, oh, would you pray for me? I've heard. What's the herd? The witness. The witnesses. Jesus' fame went out because of what he did on behalf of the Father. He healed the sick. He did cures. He cast out devils. He got involved in their lives. He was available. He taught the 12 to be available, taught the 70 to be available. The early church was available until the devil got into it. Religion got into it. I want this fellowship of believers to be known as a place of power, not theory. I want God's glory to be seen in your lives by how you think and how you speak and how you act in the marketplace. I want, you, I want people to, 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 to sense your peace and your love and your care when you walk the streets. Another day that Pastor Don and I walk into Walmart, that we're going through there, and especially in the checkouts, that we're not loving those people and being friendly and, and seeing them just ignite and respond to just that. Where is your joy? Your faces should sparkle with the glory of God's joy in your life, not long self-pity drawn out, oh my God, I hope I die and go to heaven today. I went through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm happy to be alive. Here. Count me in. Don't count me out. I want the Spirit of God to speak here today to you personally. Anything that's interfering with what I'm saying is probably an antichrist spirit of religion or division. Because I'm not representing myself, folks. Jesus is the bishop of the church, and you're his body. How come the head is so smart and the body is so atrophied? How come we have such a smart head and the rest of it is dysfunctional? Sin will make you dysfunctional. Division will make you dysfunctional. Pride will make you dysfunctional. Fear will make you dysfunctional. I know what little Samuel said when the voice of the Lord came. The voice of the Lord came to little boy Samuel. He was a just a kid. And the voice of the Lord would come and say, Samuel. And then little Samuel would say, Here I am, Lord. 
Here I am, Lord. Samuel, here I am, Lord. Your father knows you by name. Do you really believe that? If your names are written down in the Lamb's book of life, he knows you by name. You're engraved upon the palms of his very hands. You're the apple of his eye. You're the crown jewel, the crown victory of the cross. You are the seed of life in creation forever. Choose life should not be just to allow a child to be born. Choose life should be the life of God in creation all the time. Why choose life and then interfere with it? Why choose life and then corrupt it? I'm going to ask the Father to deposit by His Spirit in Jesus' name the seed of faith in you. Some of you have withdrawn because of the affairs of life. Some of you have withdrawn because of the circumstances of life. Some of you have withdrawn because of other people's interferences in your circle of Job's friends. Some of you are listening to the devil. Period. Some of you began in the spirit and are in the process of finishing in the flesh. Some of you are overrun by the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, making a living. I want you to shed yourself of the things that interfere with God. It's non-eternal, folks. I look forward to the day that people come in here and we can truly have believers standing across the front laying hands and speaking and ministering to those that come in off the street. You, ordinary believers. When I started, I was nobody. And I wasn't an elder. I was just Henry, and I had loved God, and suddenly I loved these people. And then, and then, 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 then. And God placed something within me. One thing when, when a prophet drew me out of a meeting and prophesied over me. He didn't know me from a cornfield in Iowa. He said to me, God, God said to me, you're mine. You belong to me. I've called you to do work in generation. Be all that I've called you to be, and don't listen to lies. I've had to hang on to that. You need to hang on to it, because you're no different than I am. When you became born again, God called every one of you to do a work in your generation. Why? Because you're part of the body of Christ. You're not an appendage. You're not dandruff. You're a vital, every one of you are a vital part of an organism. Vitally important. That's why the devil likes to divide us and separate us with division and schism and arguments that he can take the life out of us collectively. Guard your hearts against division. Guard your hearts against sedition. Guard your hearts against anarchy. Guard your hearts about touching God's anointed. Guard your hearts. It will not go well with you. Some of you that are here before the Father, you might ask him. You might go right back into your scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. What it says in the gifts, and there's nine of them, the instruction is very clear. Desire the best gift for you. Desire the best gift for you. One of the first gifts that God gave me was the gift of healing, gift of miracles, and discerning of spirits as an application of his heart. The next thing he gave me in the corporate assembly that was judged accurate was the gift of prophecy, then the gift of tongues, then the gift of interpretation of tongues, then the gift of faith. 
And all of it was not for me, it was some for others. You need to look past your noses. It's not about you, it's about us. Don't make this about you no longer. But if you'll start taking care of us, we'll take care of you. It's the way it is. But everybody's so self-seeking and selfish. It's all about me. I need prayer. I need this. Look, Jesus was getting somebody saved and forgiving the world while he was dying. In pain, brutally murdered, life ebbing from him. And he's getting somebody saved and forgiving those that just did. Are you kidding me? Don't tell me you can't serve while you're having a bad day. Some of the greatest miracles that God has done at my hands have happened when I felt the least like it in the natural. So it's not by your feelings. This is not psychic. It's not intuitive. It's not sparky. It's according to knowledge. My life and my health has been so much better when I cared for others. Because the very same thing that I gave to others for their benefit, I opened my ears and I took some of it too. Because I got to eat of the same food I was serving. I got to eat of the same food that I was giving. I got to partake as I was giving it away. Develop peripheral for those around you in love. Take the blinders off. Most things that you're going down under will not stand the test of fire in the judgment seat of Christ. Most of the things that you're majoring in are non-eternal. They're temporal. They're of the things that are expendable where moth doth eat and rust doth corrupt. It's, it's all expendable. Put your effort into things that are eternal, of eternal benefit, which is the souls and welfares of others. Consider those around you. Consider who they are. But I see so many people, it's just about me. Me, 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 me. Let me tell you about my problems. Let me share with you all my problems. There's provision for your problems, don't get me wrong. But not at the expense of the rest of us. It's amazing as a leader, you don't know my temptations, you don't know my battles, nor do I burden you with them, do I? Not that I, if I didn't need you at some level, I wouldn't ask for you. The issue is this, learning to be an overcomer is a faith journey that must be achieved. Resisting temptation is a joy. Overcoming the enemy is thrilling. Oh, I just wish there wasn't an enemy to overcome. Oh, get real. Is he, He's there. He has a whole kingdom. He's assigned to you. Just learn how to defeat them. Have some fun. Have some fun defeating them. I want you to ask the Father to release to you the gift of faith that you would believe. Don't look at around you at circumstances. Don't look at don't look at this thing from a psychic humanistic standpoint. Don't look at it from a world view. Don't even look at it from a church view. Look at it from a biblical view. What's the Bible say? The reason we have a world view is because we don't have a biblical view. The reason we have a humanistic psychic view is because we don't have a spiritual view. We bring God down to our level. Now he wants to bring you up to his level. You don't want to lean under your own understanding. Father, I just thank you today that you care for this flock to the degree that you won't leave them alone in your heart. Father, you gave everything to defeat the devil through the living word in your son Jesus. And here we are, sons and daughters, just like the Lord, about our Father's business Father, give us a love for each other. Let us put away our daggers and our jockeying for power and pride and self-preservation. Take away our selfish ambitions, our lust. 
our anger, our hatred, our bitterness, accusation. Remove those things that are hindering your glory. You said in your word you will not share your glory with another. I believe that. Nor do I want to interfere with your glory. Father, you created all things for your pleasure. They are created for you, by you, and for you. We are not our own. We were created for you. We were created for you. You are our Father. You are our Lord Jesus. You are our husband-to-be. You are our Savior. You are our big brother. We are not our own. You bought us with your blood, Lord Jesus. You repurchased us through your death from Satan. You broke the power of death over us. The fear of death that plagues all of mankind. And you gave us a peace and a joy that passes all understanding. That whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Father, release the Spirit of God into us that was released at the day of Pentecost. Let us repent for quenching the Holy Spirit. Let us repent to you, Father, for reforming your word into the apostasy and the passivity of religion. We repent to you, Father, for not having expectation for the miraculous. We repent to you, Father, for not having that quickening of expectation, always looking when you would come and show yourself strong on our behalf. We repent to you, Father, for not having that expectancy that doesn't go away with time. It doesn't go away. It's, it doesn't even move by whether it happens or doesn't happen. It is a faithing that happens within us, waiting and wanting and expecting. Will you come and work with us by your Spirit, Father? In Jesus' name, we repent to you, Father, for lethargic Christianity. Repent to you for, I know what you said in the word to your people of the Old Testament, away with your uh, solemn assemblies, away with your feasts, away with your vain oblations, away with it, away with it. Your form of godliness is vanity to me. Your hearts are far from me. Father, we repent to you if we're going through a form of worship, a form of of instruction, a form of godliness. We repent to you, Father, for not having that fresh zeal of expectancy that we just fall into being roommates with you, hanging out, waiting for something to happen, or saying, well, if it be thy will. Father, I'm reminded of the scriptures that we have not because we ask not. I reminded the scripture says you must believe that God is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. I remind the scripture says draw an eye to God and he'll draw an eye to you. Cleanse your filthy hands ye sinners. Draw an eye to God and he'll draw an eye to you. Birth within our spirit man something that transcends the interference of our souls and the our memories and our, our stuff and our iniquities and the things of our family trees that are so putrid that we hang on to as vestiges of death interfering with the greatness of your life. Away with it. Forgive us of the iniquities of our generations. Heal us of our diseases. Release within us a quickening of your spirit for vitality. Awaken our minds. Quicken our spirits. Let this be a living relationship with you, Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. Let it be a living relationship with us, not an appendage of thought or religion. Let it be, let it be real. Walk with us. Talk with us. In the way. Every day. Take not your Holy Spirit from us. 
but release the Holy Spirit to activate and be to us who He really is. We repent to you for passivity, Father. We repent to you for being an unhappy wanderer in this journey towards the celestial city. We repent to you, Father, for lethargy, apathy, indifference, being calloused even by truth, hearing truth and shrugging it off as if it didn't apply to us. We want your spirit to come and represent you, Father, and your will. Good for you. Spontaneous. Let your spirit come, Father. Quicken our inner man. Quicken our souls. Let us be true spiritual beings, not soulish, animalistic thinkers. Let us learn to forgive others as you have forgiven us. Take away the blocks and the hindrances that keep us from your presence and your health and your sanity. Healing is the children's bread. Let it be true bread, not moldy, wormy bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Let us embrace the words of the Lord in the prayer to the Father in the Lord's Prayer. Let us understand it. Let us apprehend it. Let us understand the depth of what Jesus was saying. Forgiving others. Being led by his spirit. I don't want to go any further. The, God has spoken. The, and the burden for you that's within me is solid. I don't belabor points because I need something to say. The Father is dropping a plumb line right in the middle of your lives today. If you have ears to hear, you'll understand what I just said. If you don't have ears to hear, ears to hear, you'll just sidestep what I just said. Father, I pray that there be eyewitnesses to your power and your glory in the earth. That when the Son of Man comes, he shall find faith in the earth. Let us be some of those people that faith will be found within us. Not in word, but in deed. Because you cannot be witnesses just to the word. You have to be witnesses to the fruit of the word. Because faith without works is dead. Father, I thank you for this moment here today. Those that our hearts are before you, I know you honor all of our hearts. Those whose hearts are challenged, those whose hearts are changing, even those hearts that are resisting, continue to speak to them. It is not easy to move and be led by the Spirit when we've been so long ruled and led by the flesh. And as we began in the Spirit, we need to finish in the Spirit, not finish in the flesh. Father, we're just people. We're just humans. We're just frail. We just have thoughts. We have iniquities. But you are greater because the, the Word says that when our heart condemns us, you are greater than our heart. And you know all things. Let us have the revelation today. Because without the revelation, we have no ability to pursue the word. Let us ponder the things that we've heard today. Let us mark this day down as a day that you, Father, have dropped a plumb line into our hearts that you have more in mind than just saving us. You have more in mind than just getting us into eternity. But you have in mind that will be effective for you because you're a father that is on the throne every day. You neither slumber nor sleep. You're on duty 
your eyes are open, your ears hear the prayer of the righteous, you know our thoughts, you know everything about us. We are your life in the earth. We're all that you have, people like us all over the world. You, we're all that you have, Father. And this little watering hole, this little oasis, which is, we're not, we're not where the sun rises or sets in Christianity. We're just this group. So in this group, this oasis, would you let your spirit come strong? That even as this small little church in the middle of nowhere you have used to impact thousands of people worldwide. Let it continue to impact those that make this their church home, not just those that come from far away. Let the gospel that is preached and heard here be powerful in the ears and the deeds and the works of those that call this their watering hole, this place of assembly, this place of teaching, this place of praise and worship, this place of growth, this place of change, this place of the miraculous. Let it be corporate, not individual. But let it be individual to make up the corporate. And let, let us not regard ourselves after what we perceive to be our weakness or our inabilities. Because even you, Lord Jesus, chose people that wouldn't have passed the front desk of interview of any church in the world. You chose ignorant and unlearned men that you could implant your mind into without the interference of Satan's mind so strongly. So, Father, let it happen here. Let it begin as a bubble that begins to grow. Send those that need the miraculous let us have encounters in the marketplace with them. Let us not say, well, come to church and get your miracle. Because when we're in the marketplace, we are the purveyor of that miracle on the spot. Let us not become so religious we make it so complicated. In letting your glory be shown, it's not time to disciple them and go through 30 minutes of discipleship and why they're sick in the marketplace. Let us just be available to represent you in Jesus' name. Make it simple. Let us keep it simple. Just a simple burst of faith with you, Father, that your glory will be unhindered through us. Let us not reform you into our methods and our mythologies. Let us not reform you into uh, great long sermons. Away with the sermons. We have a Bible already. Let us just bring our love and your love and your power over the devil that men can have the witness that there is a God, that he loves us, and he's all-powerful, and he can do things for mankind. Let the world see that through each of us from this day forward in Jesus' name, amen. One thing I want to say, I know many are listening through our Overcomers um, community all over different parts of the world that are listening to this service. You don't know that, many of you, but there are groups of people all over the world that are listening to this service today. For those of you out there that are listening, and I know you're there, you're included in what was said. Go to work in Jesus' name. The Father, by his spirit, has been so gentle this morning. Gentle to convict in such deep things. Hope of the generations we needed to hear what was shared.
good old spiritual checkup this morning. You have the gospel, and then you have the gospel with power. There's a scripture that says, those that say, yea, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Love you, Lord. But deny the power thereof. Dunamis. From such, yes. turn away. Yes. So, to say, Lord, yes, Lord, seems noble. But to not let who you say, yes, Lord, to be all-powerful mm -hmm. is restrictive to who he is. And and it is, like you said, it's the descent, decline back into... It's a decline. Yeah. Like when you read that thing in the Old Testament, as I was listening to Pastor Donna's little morning scripture reading, it's just so wonderful. I listened to it. And is the Lord was angry. He was wroth. He, he had contempt for them because they needed him but they forgot what he had done in the miraculous. And what they were doing, they were accusing him. And these verses were saying, if I paraphrase this, Lord, we know that you're probably not going to do this for us. They began to tell him why he couldn't do it, why he wouldn't do it. And as I heard the scriptures coming through the thing that, that they were actually telling God why he wouldn't or couldn't, he was becoming angry in the heavenlies and said, wait a minute, I did. Don't tell me I couldn't or I wouldn't because boom, diddy, boom, diddy, boom, diddy, boom. This is what I did and you are witnesses to what I did coming out of Egypt. Have you forgotten that I am able and can? Don't tell me I can't do something. That's the message today. Don't tell him he can't do something. I don't dare. So I have to say, and, and this is where I'm at, to you, I don't want us ever saying to him, he can't do what he can as God. And I'm not going to tell him why he hasn't, why he isn't. And, and you can say, well, he hasn't done it for me. There you go. It may be a sin issue now because when I taught you this morning, I said, well, it could be a sin issue represent, separating you from him or it may be just that he wants to be God. It, and so it isn't just a matter of sanctification. It could, be, it could be this, it could be that. The issue is this. You never accuse God. Did you, could you not learn that from Job? When Job became God's instructor, it didn't go well. So could we let God be God and say he can do all things all the time? And you say, well, it's not happening for me when I want it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Whether I live, you didn't get that teaching today called the temptation of fear of dying. The fear of death is all over the place. That's a temptation. We live our lives trying to stay alive. We spend billions trying to make sure we do. Why? Because we have a fear of dying. I didn't teach that today. I will next time I come. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Didn't mean to interrupt you, I'm but so I just got, I'm still stirred. What did come? I'm s we needed so much. And we, we honor you. Let God be true. I got scripture still popping in me. Can't help it. Let God be true. And every man a liar. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday. Today and forever.